We are currently recording. Great. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, Mayor uh, Murphy can't make it tonight. He had a death in the family, sadly. Uh, his 96-year-old uh, uh, Aunt Marie uh, passed away and needs to be with family. So uh, you'll have me uh, chairing this meeting, the first meeting I've chaired since uh, I was class president in 1969. So bear with me. <laughs> um, uh, this is a budget hearing. And uh, we will, uh, for the... Uh, Fiscal year 22-23, and we'll uh, turn it over to uh, Village Manager Jerry Barbiero. Thank you, um, Deputy Mayor Young. Let me try to pull up a slide. I want to pull up a slide to start the presentation. Um, one second. <clears throat> Okay, I'll share my screen now. Let's go to slideshow, beginning. One second. Okay. Oh, we have to open the meeting, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. I entertain a motion to open the meeting, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's get out of this. So the other night we looked at um, uh, the tentative budget presentation, uh, mostly developed by Mr. Sarnoff um, and uh, of course, uh, Laura, Augie and myself, but Mr. Sarnoff did the bulk of the work on it. And that's why I wanted him to present the, um, uh, the tentative budget PowerPoint. Our budget this year, um, the tentative budget is $41,321,290, of which um, <clears throat> the um, $13,455,388 is revenue other than a property tax. Uh, we plan on using what we've used for the last maybe decade or more, $600,000 in fund ba balance to offset um, the taxes and lower the uh, uh, lower the impact on the on the residents of the community property uh, property taxpayers um, and our property tax levy is twenty seven million two sixty five nine oh two um, the purpose of this meeting is to field questions from the board of trustees and um, uh, come back either this evening with an answer or in subsequent evenings, uh, subsequent uh, work sessions um, to answer their questions, anything that they want to prioritize. Uh, there is some room in the budget um, to add more to this budget uh, since we are approximately $250,000 below the tax cap. So if there are priorities that the Board of Trustees, and this is really now in the Board of Trustees hands, uh, we've created the tentative budget we know that it's a responsible, well-executed, tentative budget, um, well-presented budget. Um, the, um, the tax rate is actually going down in this budget. Um, we are raising taxes over um, uh, uh, the, the year um, from last year from our budget. We're raising our budget 1.05%, but it is um, important that these next five or six meetings are, um, are informational and effective from the Board of Trustees to the staff to be able to um, make sure that it, the budget is the board's budget because the board will now have to uh, vote on and adopt this budget. And so what we're here tonight is to talk about revenue or any issues or concerns uh, with revenue, uh, expenses, issues or concerns with expenses, as well as, um, working on the capital budget and uh, the capital budget in our case, uh, unlike many, many other communities is extensive. It is um, very well detailed. It is um, reviewed annually by our department heads which have joined us. Um, and it is really um, the plan potentially um, presented as a five-year plan but it's probably more of a 10-year plan because of the cost and some of the cost of these items but um, I keep looking over to my left because that's where my capital budget uh, plan sits 
uh, all the time. So um, we can start uh, Deputy Mayor Young any way you want, but um, maybe we start with uh, um, any questions or any issues or concerns regarding revenue so that we can either discuss that or come back to the board with uh, a, an answer um, if we can't answer that questions. Do any of the trustees have uh, questions regarding revenue? Thank you. Um, this is Dan. I'm sorry, sorry. I just yeah. hand up. Go ahead, Victor. Yeah, can, uh, I, uh, can I suggest we put on the revenues on the screen? I think it's page 225 20, onwards and, and, and go over them broadly and then we can have a focused discussion. You want to go line by line? Sure, we could do that. Yeah. Group by group, line by line, as as, okay. as ever, as you know, some some. You don't have to go line by line unless okay. it becomes specific. It could be group by group. As, Let me get it up. I, what I think is just to organize the conversation. Yeah, sure, sure. But I, I think somebody else wanted to speak. I, I just got ahead. Um, and did you want to say something? I think Dan wanted to talk also. Yeah, um, I. I think Victor's point is very well done. I was going to ask for a going through the um, uh, the thirteen million plus uh, how that how the breakdown is and how that compares with last year's breakdown. What went up? What went down? Et cetera. You're talking about the uh, items not raised by property taxes. Yes. We couldn't answer that tonight, but we want to answer that for you in detail. But we wouldn't. We didn't. We didn't have. Uh, at least I didn't have that I can recall advanced uh, request of that. But we could certainly do that in a different meeting. That, um, that's fine. It, it's part yeah. of revenue, but that's that's fine, Jerry. But I, yeah, yeah, I, we can we can certainly do that and and show you the main items that, of course, Dan. A lot of items stayed the same, but. The, you know, we can show you which items went up and which items went down. We could do that. We just need a little time to do that. Just as a matter of curiosity, it, it's 13 plus this year or in the proposed budget. What was it last year? I'd have to look. We'd have to. 11,000, 11, 11,926,60. There you go. There's a breakout of the increases and decreases in the revenues on page 227 of the budget document. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. What, one point on that, to the extent we can advance or identify some of the issues that relate to that percentage, that 13 percentage yeah. that are, we hit on them today, then then if you can pinpoint those will be very beneficial. And then if we can then finish the conversation on revenues, beginning of the first meeting next week, that would yeah. be, then we can wrap up revenues, that'll be great. Okay, so I have the page up, I'll share it with, uh, Victor, I'll share it now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, Jerry, there's also a very cursory uh, review of some of these uh, revenue adjustments in the presentation from Monday evening. Yep. Uh, let me let me share my screen now. And it's this one. Oh, are you talking about this? Um, yes, keep scrolling down. There you go. Here we are. So on the, Jerry, are you gonna take them through this or am I? You, you, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be your AV guy. So in the further right column, you have your 2023 tentative stage budget. And in your third column from the left to the right, that was last year's adopted column. So if you compare those two columns, you can see that interest, other tax items, we had a decrease of 18,000, 18%. Uh, and that was attributed to the fact that the interest and penalties that we're budgeting is less than what we anticipated in the previous year. Huh? Going down, the next tax item is the non-property tax items, which include Hotel tax, which we kept flat, sales tax distribution. We are currently in the full year of the 1% increase that they gave us. So we're projecting 4.4 million on that versus last year that was 3.6 million. Utilities gross receipt, we have a slight 
decrease in that of 0.085%, which gives us an overall increase of 18% in this line item. The next line item that we're going to look at is departmental income. Departmental income was showing a decrease of 45%. That's attributed to building department miscellaneous fees. Uh, total decrease of 48% and 48%, 0.24. Um, we feel that this is the amount of fees that are going to decrease by this amount based on the current trend. So far during the actual year, we've only taken 7,165. The run rate at this point will project out to 25,000. Right. That's why that went down over 48%. Next page. Yes, the next page is public safety. Public safety has a 109% increase. And, and that's, that's attributed item, to the police detail. Correct. Uh, and there's both sides of this. Uh, one is the revenue side and one is the expense side. Um, our village manager was very lucky to uh, appropriate more work for the special detail, requiring uh, utility companies to use PD in major intersections. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jerry. No, it's, uh, it's correct. A lot of the work is being done on major intersections and, and busy roads, not on side streets or dead ends. And so we felt it was safer for the community to, um, to make them use our police detail uh, because we know that the police department will do a better job than a, than a, a typical uh, flag person uh, at that location. So we did it for public safety, um, for, for public safety reasons. And I'm glad you did it for public safety reasons. It brought in 143% more <laughs> revenue. To right, the right. Um, health stayed flat. The next major line item is transportation. And overall, transportation went. I use my budget, but my eyes can't see that far. Um, so, so we we increased railroad, the the um, 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 tentative uh, increase in railroad resident commuter parking permits is six point three percent non-resident is 17.7% in this page, on this page. Correct. The overall um, increase in this is 4.56 in transportation. Correct. With all these other items, basically all parking permits and uh, things of that nature. We did anticipate parking spot dining to bring in approximately $20,000 this year. So um, um, I understand that we already have requests. I understand that the chamber is looking for the village to give them some kind of a discount like we did last year. Um, and I'm willing to work with them provided that we hit our number. Um, that's really all I care about. Definitely an increase in seasonal parking permits. Um, we're increasing uh, that by um, uh, by almost double and 92%. Um, but we did, uh, we did reduce daily parking by 20%. So as Augie had explained, this is 4.56% in the transportation line. Increase. Next item, Aug. Ultra and recreation, we have an overall Culture and recreation, we have an overall, looks like it's staying flat on yep. culture and rec. And the specific line items are listed below. Um, so do you want me to go through each line item or does anybody have any specific questions? Yeah, we're at 4.34% as an increase for culture and recreation. A lot of that has to do with the fact that we're working our way out of the pandemic. Um, but if there's any individual line that may be in question or um, that you have concerns over our projections. Of course, we can, you know, we can talk about that um, at all. Um, we have increased the MEC and we have our naturalist here. We have increased uh, revenue uh, and MEC significantly um, because we're going to have more programs and do, do more as far as revenue uh, enhancements 
um, in that uh, in that area. Um, as long as Kyle doesn't get lost on the kayaks, we're going to continue to have kayak tours. Um, we have a lot of uh, other areas that are either zeroed out um, or flat, I should say, um, or we have some, uh, you know, some, some uh, significant uh, uh, decreases and increases. It's really all over, the, all over the place when it comes to that because we took every line, we looked at every line, and we talked about every line individually. Uh, one of the things, Jerry, the, the board already approved, we, we, they approved the uh, recreation fees and charges and harbor fees. Correct. I think it was either at the end of last year or early this year. Mm -hmm. So we did have a, a cursory review of, of those fees mm -hmm. with the board. On page 232, Homey Community Service has stayed flat, a 0% increase. Uh, the current fees taken in, the run rates are projecting that we're going to take in the same as prior year. Intergovernmental charges, there's an increase of 36%, 36.92%. Um, New York State contract for 11.9 miles of lane, we're projecting to receive 21,630. Um, County of Westchester, 0.13 miles at 4,019 per mile, uh, we're projecting to receive 10,000. Um, transportation of prisoners, we're looking to increase from 10,000 to 12,000. And the big item is stop DWI. Last year we projected 1,000, this year we're projecting 7,000. We're an overall increase of 36.92%. Next and, and as everyone, just one second on the DWIs, everyone has seen we're, we're starting to receive awards and thank you, Chief DeRuza and the police department, but we're starting to receive awards from, from other um, uh, entities or, or uh, people that would recognize how much and how well we do regarding the, uh, DW, the Stop DWI initiatives. This funny property has an overall increase of 1.96%. And we'll run down the items on there on your money of property. Um, interest has remained flat. We project no increase for the subsequent year. Um, sports times three is as per contract, it's remaining flat. Wireless flagpole rental, we're projecting a 10% increase in that. Fish and bait shop, a 4.4% increase. Uh, easement on 306 Fayette is a 20% increase. American Towers, we're projecting a 0.91% decrease. And Keeps Pavilion Rental has slightly gone up from 25,000 to 27,500. There's a 10% increase on that. Any questions or concerns? License and permits. Overall increase is 1.87%. Most of the line have remained flat. Uh, license others has gone up by 79.91%. Uh, particularly the increases attributed to the activity in the current year, what we're taking in. So we projected what the run rate would be until the end of the year to give it at 79%. Uh, street opening permits is 13% increase from 75,000 to 85,000 and electrical permits went 10% increase from 50,000 to 55,000. Questions, concerns, comments? Okay, next category. Fines and forfeitures is an overall decrease of 9.44%. Um, the court fees have shown a trend of decreasing. Uh, last year we budgeted 884. Um, this year coming up, we're projecting 800,000. Postal alarm charges, we stayed flat with those items. Overall, that causes the, it's mostly fines and forfeitures that show a decrease. Questions, concerns, uh, next item? Next item. I, actually, I had one. For fines, and, and forfeitures, 
if we're only at 402, it's the top of the page, we're only at 402, 929 now. How are we going to get up to eight in two months? Uh, one of the issues, not. there's a several month lag on uh, court revenues because we have to report the money to the state, then the state sends us back the money and then we deposit it and that there's a, a, a about a two to three month lag time on that. There is. Um, if I can wrap it up, then the trustee Lucas, the eight hundred thousand is for next year's budget from mm -hmm. June to May. Right. We're at four hundred now. The previous year's budget anticipated we'd finish the year at eight eighty four. We're not going to reach the eight eighty four. That right. contributed to the decrease from eight hundred eight eighty four to eight hundred thousand. So you, a nine point five percent decrease. So you think we'll get up to eight hundred thousand, and if we don't, we can revisit. Yeah. I believe we're going to get up to 800,000 because we're pretty much past this pandemic. Yeah. And more people are going to come out to eat. And yeah. they're going to make illegal U turns and they're not going to follow the law. So but I think this is we'll really from there. parking stuff, right? This is really yeah. all parking stuff. Yeah. The fines and all of that. Bills, it's, and traffic. Um, it's composed of parking, traffic, and code violations. Right. So, so in, a, in a full pandemic year with closures and everything, uh, they collected 527,000. Okay. Obviously, you know, it's a lot less than the 814 that they collected prior, um, but um, we know that the number will get close to, closer to what we normally would see, but we still decided to go to a uh, just a, just under 10% uh, decrease just to give ourselves some buffer. Thank you. Thanks. Yep, thank you. Sale of property and comp for losses is an overall increase of 9.26%. The recycling has gone up 125 percent, from 4,000 to 9,000. Food scrap, a new item we added to the budget, we're projecting to come out to 13,000 annually. Sale of equipment, it's a 50 percent increase, but the numbers are overall they're kind of small. If you're looking at 20,000 to 30,000 $30, dollars for an overall overall increase of 9.26 percent. Miscellaneous, there's an overall increase of 17.34%. What's included in miscellaneous is refund the prior year's expenditures, library bond payments. That those are based on amortization schedules for 25 years. So they pay every year. And our related AIM payments, which are given to us from New York State. There, it's actually the number is issued by New York State, but it's actually money collected from Westchester County. Right. And LMC TV, BOC distributions, we're projecting 80,750 from the information we have. Yes. Um, that's all on that line, Adam. Overall, there's an increase of 17.34 for miscellaneous. Any questions, concern, or can we move to the next item? State aid. State aid was showing an overall increase of 5.82. Mortgage tax, we're projecting an increase of 0.22%. The per capita that was in line was moved up to the 0200 as requested by New York State. Navigation enforcement stayed flat. Uh, youth programs were anticipating an increase of 125.20%, and the bus shows the state flat. Overall, we had a projection of 5.82 in this line item. Well, you talk about the CHIPS program number. That's the number that we get from the state, the 301. Correct. And basically, we try to aggregate these amounts every year so we get enough money to do a big project. This year we've been awarded 301, 301,000 versus last year of 237. Mm -hmm. The next item is federal aid. We have an overall increase of 138.10%. Um, that is mostly trend. That is that I, I stand corrected. I'm sorry, 0% of federal aid. Interfund transfers is 138.10%. We're transferring 400,000 from debt service fund and 100 from water fund. 
to help pay the expenditures in your, each respective fund. So that gives you an overall budget of $13,455,388,000. For an increase of 12.87% in our revenue projections. So the, the big items are the sales tax and the park. Those, those are, there's some, those are. yeah, there's some others, but you're right. Those are the big items. Yeah, and the okay. parking, um, Dan, the parking, we had a, we had a, um, a lower number and um, we started, we continued to follow the numbers. As you may remember, um, I had uh, Chief Simpson uh, reporting to us this time last year, the numbers that were in the lot. And now I'm, um, I'm uh, counting cars uh, on my way to work most days and the increase is significant. Plus also we know that um, Metro North has added a significant number of trains uh, to the line. Uh, so we're, we're, we added a little bit more money to that while we were working on the tentative budget. That's our rationale for the parking, especially the, the, the railroad uh, parking. Uh, understand, uh, and I understand the rationale. So I'm, uh, uh, I'm a little concerned that we may not hit that. Uh, yeah, I understand. We, we, we might want to be a little bit more conservative on that. Um, again, I'm hoping that COVID is, will continue to decrease. Yeah. But the, the new variant is now getting a lot more. Mm -hmm on a worldwide basis mm -hmm. is, the dom is now the dominant variant in the United States and who the hell knows what's going to happen. So, so, so this budget has a little bit of room uh, unless the board decides to bring in uh, new initiatives, new expenses on the expense side, this budget has a little bit of room to shave some of those numbers and make your, make your, um, make your budget more comfortable for you. Um, so you're still, you know, you're still significantly under the cap, not, you know, not, not millions, but several hundred thousand under the cap. So that's a big benefit uh, to us. We could go to any other area that you want, whatever the trustees want to do. We can go to expenses. If you want to run that down, that's pretty extensive, but our department heads are here um, to, uh, to, to explain anything that, that they may that we have questions for them, or we can go into capital, whatever you want to do. I just have a comment on over, overall on revenues. We just, uh -huh. we just received. I also, without going detail by de line by line, uh, I also think uh, it may be appropriate to, to be a bit more conservative on sales tax and parking. Um, yep. each, each, each once, then you put the pieces together again, but. Just, just to give the critical, uh, I, you know, just uh, jumping to a 13% increase, 13.5 million is huge. When, it was around 10 when I, when I started looking at, at this, and I'm glad it's going up, but, but I, I, I also think we, uh, you know, let, and in order to do that, it's better, to, you need to compare and have a, more, more detailed discussion on sales tax, which is not, it will, will detract. So I'll, I'll reserve on, on that and, and, and okay. look at other figures. Sure. Um, but but it, on the optimistic side, it sounds good. But if we want to be more conservative, it would need to be shaved. But in order to do that, we'll need to compare and have some figures. So that's that that's that's my reservation on, on, on overall. I know, I, yeah. So, so I, know, I know Mr. Sonoff will volunteer to take a look at what the other um, what the other communities have projected as far as percent increase in sales tax, and we can have a little bit of a discussion. Communities our size, our budget size, you know, maybe a little bit closer to our makeup. We can kind of figure out what they're thinking, and we can have that discussion, you know, next week when we have most of our meetings, if that's okay. If I may add, Jerry, uh, yeah. beginning, of, uh, beginning of next week when we when we discuss this, yeah. To yeah. wrap it up. I yeah. just want to add. So far, our number is based on. We've collected two payments thus far, and we bought in 2.3 million. We have two more payments coming in. Our payments are coming in a little over a million each payment. So that's why we came up with the 4.4 million. 
but then we'll do the research and see how other communities are coming in. Yep. Yeah, and just we're Oh, sorry, sorry, Victor. I was gonna say it's overall, you know, there was a lot of optimism earlier in the year, but now that you see some some revisions of, 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 of numbers, uh, companies, government, so so just just to be in yeah. line with how people are having a second look because it's it's as we were rushing into getting very optimistic, we, we have we have some doom scenarios, but not doom scenarios, but some interesting scenarios to consider as well. So mm -hmm. that's my that's all. Okay. Yeah. I think Jerry, um, I think we're three hundred eleven thousand dollars below the cap right now. Give or take. Three eleven. I thought it was two fifty. So it's three eleven. You're right because I saw it on your slide the other day. I should have remembered. Yeah. Again, the, the point is revenues yeah. are revenues. The cap, yep. the overall picture is another. So, you know. It's, so uh, so we know. So as we do individual, if I could ask, as we do individual budget um, meetings next week with our department heads, we're definitely going to focus on their expenses. So. Maybe we reserve the expense conversations budget by budget or department by department and try to spend the other hour and a half that we have left uh, on capital, if we want to talk about capital, um, and maybe go do a deep dive into capital or a, a quick overview, whatever you want me to do. But I know we're going to, if we do, if we do line by line expenses tonight, we're also going to do them next week when we have our budget meetings. So um, it's up to you, but if we want to go into capital, you know, we could really dive into that. Okay, Jerry, for just as one person, I much prefer to go to, when we talk about different items, to go to the more significant items as opposed to line by line. I think right. it's, it's, it's much more productive from a you know, policy vantage point. Okay. Uh, because the rest of it, you know, one way or another, by the time you get done, it's going to be significant. Sure. So, so what we can do in preparation of next week's meetings, and, and that's a good hint, um, is that we can take the individual department budgets that we're going to review that evening and highlight the lines that have either increased significantly or decreased significantly, you know, below over 10% or, or, or you know, um, um, negative 10%. If that works, we could, we could certainly help with that and move the discussion along. That would be fine with us. We could do that work. Yeah. I think, I think that might be more beneficial to Okay. More, That's good. Because we have, we have limited time in these meetings. Yeah, we always do. You're right. So it's 10 uh, plus or 10 minus, and we'll highlight those lines and discuss okay. those lines if, if needed in detail. So, Lou, if we're moving to the capital budget, I have a couple of things that, uh, for perspective, I'd like to go over before we dive into the uh, nitty gritty. Uh, were you uh, ready to do that? Uh, that's what I'm asking you. You're running the meeting, so I'm. Uh, oh, well, well, okay. I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm more of a following than running, but um, uh, yes, let's move on to the capital budget. Okay. okay. I can so, put up. I have the capital on my screen if you wanted, or if you want to just talk, talk in general terms, whatever you want to do, just let me know. Uh, I have a couple of things that I'd like to try and do for perspective, for, um, from a board's perspective. Uh, the budget committee had recommended, um, starting two years ago, uh, to have a target of 7.5% for the uh, <clears throat> um, for the uh, debt service. Uh, to the operating budget, mm -hmm. not, not as a cap, not as a something set in stone, but as a policy target. Um, so this would help us, you know, um, allow us to better handle what the amortizations will be, et cetera. It does not mean that we can't, you know, uh, go over it. it. doesn't mean that we can't go under it. It just means that uh, we need to take, we should be taking a hard, a very hard look when we start moving ahead of that. Um, and we have significant capital expenditures, you know, when you tell, when you total everything up and we all have to pay for that. Um, so I would like to propose that um, as a operating target. Um, it's a, it's a, so it's a policy you're talking to the other board members about. You don't necessarily yeah. have to get our input. We don't. We don't need to give input. So clarify that for me, Dan. I, I would like to maybe, maybe I'll put it in the form of a motion to to clarify it. Okay. 
I, um, I'd like there's a operating policy that the village should maintain uh, debt service at a at seven point five percent of the operating budget. And you you chose that figure why? That, that that figure comes from the budget committee who worked on it for uh, well over a year and their recommendation in 2020 uh, to the board, uh, got to the board and we never really adopted it one way or the other. Um, and what it is, is a guideline. That, that's my proposal. That's, that's an overall guideline for, uh, for budgetary processes going forward, right? It, it, for, it would include this one too. It doesn't mean that we can't go over it. Um, it what it's saying is, Let's take a hard look at what we're doing in relation to, you know, that percentage and see where we come out. And, you know, that does not preclude us from going higher or lower or hitting it exactly. I, it, I think, uh, I, mean, I don't know about what everybody else thinks, but I think that'd be something appropriate to bring up for a work session and we could discuss it separately. I don't think we should, um, if we were looking at this budget, we should probably just look at this budget. Don't you think that? I'm sorry, Lou. You I mean, I, mean uh, I think we should just look at what, what's, on, what's in front of us here as opposed to talking about uh, a, a debt service limit uh, in this forum. It's not a limit. Let me, let me be very clear about that. It is a target. So if we are over that, we take a, a harder look at it. It does not mean that we can't do anything. Oh, okay. the, the, I'm, I'm being very careful with the words. That's why I've preferred said this is a policy target. All right, but uh, I've got questions about individual items here. I think we should get to that. No, no, I, I, I understand that, but it, yeah. it, I think we have to put all, when we, at the end of the day, we have to put this into perspective. And I think the budget committee's work on this was, uh, you know, significant. Um, you were not on the board then, but everybody else was on the board. Um, you know, um, and it's a question of trying to help guide us through the process so that when we get through with all of the, everything, we take a look at it and say, okay, are we, where do we stand in relation to that? What do we wanna do? That's it, all. It, it sounds reasonable. I think you should uh, put it on a, a work session budget, we, uh, a work session agenda, we should uh, talk about it. Well, I, I think, you know, the budget, the, I, we got this about a year ago from the budget committee. I was looking at it today. I was looking for something else, but I found this memo it was from last April. But, you know, I think it's principles about what we should be doing to be fiscally responsible. And I think that would be useful. I'm going to, I will forward it to you. I can find it again. Um, I'll forward it to everybody. Um, and it, it's simply like a target. And I think if we wait, you know, if we put it on a work session, we won't discuss it till after the budget's been adopted. And I think it's about, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a, we, we can put it over the, the next work session. Yeah, but we won't oh. get to it. We rarely get to the, the new items on our work session. So oh, I think, it, I think it, it's it, just it. something to consider as we are thinking about the budget, how, you know, how much we can afford. I mean, Jerry said this in the beginning. Our, our, we have a five-year capital plan, but financially it's more like a 10-year capital plan because we, unless, you know, I mean, I made a joke about the village buying a lottery ticket, but no, we it's, don't it's, have it's, the it's, money to do all of this. Yeah. It's, and you're right. that's the it's point that Jerry made. So we have to figure out how much we're actually going to get done, what the priorities are, and it may not be the fun things. It may be the things that <clears> have <throat> to get done, and how much we can afford to either bond or use from reserves. And so I think a target's really helpful. All right. We have how many more of these sessions? We have well several more, right? We have. This yeah. is the only session for the for the capital budget. Right. Well, I'm not comfortable. And, and, that and we, we not put this on at the beginning to try and help get us, get us feel of trying to where we want to be, you know, when we end up. Um, you know, anyway, I've made a motion. If somebody wants to second it, that's fine. If not, then. I mean, I'm happy to second it. I think what I mean, I'm, 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 I understand what I understand what Lou is saying, but um, it's not going to be helpful to staff if we decide to do this at the end of April. Would that be fair from staff's point perspective? The capital? Yeah. No, I'm just saying if we decide that we're that that we're going to work for a target, it, you need to know that now. 
we we um we need to know if the board wants to create a policy. That's for sure. That's mm -hmm. that's definitely something we need to know. But but Augie, if you could explain a little bit about our bonding capacity and what Trustee Natchez is talking about, which is a, a $3.1 million debt service included in our $41 million budget. What's our bonding capacity? Let's start from there. 295 million. Right. And so our debt service today, I mean, we could look it up, but I'm sorry I, I put the, the sheet away. Our debt service included in this budget is? The total bond outstanding. Uh-huh. Uh, the, our debt service and what we're making payments on this budget. That's what I think Trustee Natchez is talking about. Well, what we're making payments right now, this budget, the total interest in, and principal is four million thirty-seven. Uh huh. Seven percent right. on forty-one million is two point eight million. Right. Two point eight. So already over the seven percent. Correct. But does that mean? Like I'm a little confused how that works. So what we're maintaining now is higher than that debt limit. And we're still able to bring in a responsible budget. If you want to lower the amount of money that we bond uh, and keep it at the the two and a half, the two eight three million dollar number, that's fine. But that's a policy. That's not something the staff would be involved in. So Just like we have a policy of thirty percent um, of um, of revenue of surplus to our budget of uh, fund balance to our budget. That's a policy the board created. So if it's a policy, we abide by it, whatever whatever you want. But right now we're easily maintaining, what was it, number? four point what? 4.37. $4.3 million. We're easily maintaining $4.3 million in this budget of debt service. So it's and not, so uh, it's a significant reduction. If we keep it at 4.3, as things come off, we add things on. I think that's what you're looking at, but right now, if you're looking at the policy that you're creating or that you're that you're recommending, we would have to not purchase anything to get down to the 7.5% debt service of, of budget. We'd have to pay off that million dollars first before we could buy anything. Uh, that, that's dramatically. I, I, I think you're misunderstanding. Okay. Okay. Because what I'm saying is this is a policy as a target. A target. There are reasons to go over it. I don't have a problem if we are really understanding it and saying, yes, we should, you know, we need to do this, 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 and this and go over it. But it helps us, I think, helps guide us in terms of our prioritization of making, uh, of, of really coming to grips with, you know, our priorities. That's all. And I don't have a problem of being higher. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, I, I think it's uh, it, it, the way it's laid out. It's just way, way, way too low, Dan. I mean, uh, uh, but, uh, we need to look at it. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't think it's something we can we can talk about tonight. What what may be what may be an example of this is the fact that we have um, a surplus or a fund balance now of about thirty eight, almost forty percent easily 40% of our fund balance based on our um, based on our budget. We have 10% more in our fund balance than we than we than our policy states. Mm -hmm. If we're going to use some of that 10%, that's going to help us offset the debt service because we can spend the money that we have in essence in the bank to to purchase capital items and then our debt service goes lower of course because we're not paying debt service on those items that we're paying quote unquote in cash. That can help us easily create this, you know, this this happy medium uh, through everything. But that's why maybe it may should it may and should be a discussion item at a work session. We have three more work sessions next week. We can create one of those right. one of those, you know, their work sessions. So we just add it to that work session as as a uh, as an agenda item. And, and the and board would discuss it. And if, the, if the budget committee wants to come in and, and, and give us their reasoning, that 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 would be that would be uh, helpful. Okay. But from what you've laid out here, it just seems like we'd be putting on a straitjacket. I, I don't understand it. I think that we should be discussing it before we finalize the budget. But mm -hmm. I also think, you know, 
as I think about what's happened in the last six months, you know, we have a lot of expenses. I mean, it's great that we have, it's great that our, our, our it's great that we have a, a cushion in our reserve. That's, yeah. that's great. And, um, and we have a policy that sort of helps guide us with what we do with that. Right. Um, we also have huge expenses in deferred maintenance on buildings. You know, maybe that's, that might be, you know, when, the, when the, you know, the controller's office is always suggesting if you've got a really healthy reserve fund that you may want to restrict it for, restrict parts of it for building improvements or building repairs. And I think, I think that's where we are. We know we can't accomplish our five-year capital plan in five years without going into tremendous debt. We have a cushion because we, I mean, because we've been fiscally responsible and we've, you know, managed and we've, and we've created this policy two years ago of the reserve. So maybe now is the time to discuss how else we marshal our resources, figure out what we, we can do and what we can't do. When we create those reserves, my only concern about the creating the reserves and, and targeting um, those funds for certain areas is that once you create that, the comptroller has been clear to say that you can't revert it back to something else. And that's a little bit, you know, we're a little, it's a little scary for us because we may need that for something else, right. but you know, so, so that's, that's a little bit of a concern with that policy. Um, I guess I'm, it shouldn't I'm not, be like that. It shouldn't be like I, that. But, but I guess but I'm is. not saying we necessarily do that, but mm -hmm. we can, if, if, you know, if we've got a, if we've got a cushion in that 30% reserve fund, we can, without creating a different fund, use some of it as if we had a different fund to make sure we're doing what we need to do with the buildings that are, because we can't keep, I, we can't I keep agree. having these emergencies. I, I, if, if, if you can look at it that way, I 100% agree. And I know that, yeah. that the rest of the staff would too. But I agree with that. Because we, we can look at it that way without, but without handcuffing ourselves to, to, that, um, to yeah. that regulation the controller has. I, I, I agree. I don't think it, um, Nora is suggesting a legal reserve. Yeah. As opposed to a, you know, a concept reserve, if you will. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, uh, um, a, a more dedicated uh, use of the funding. I get it. We're smart enough to be able to set aside what we need to set aside to take care of certain things without creating the, the reserve fund that the uh, that would that would uh, hurt us in in the long run, in the long run. Well, it... what else? What else? Um, we can Dan. What we'll do is we'll add the seven point five for discussion at one of the other meetings. Um, towards the end of one of the other meetings, after the department head has been uh, <clears throat> has been allowed to explain their 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 um, uh, budget and then you know dismissed. We could certainly do that. I mean, we could do it at the first meeting. We could do it at the second meeting, whatever you want. And, and I'd, I'd love to hear from the budget committee to find out what their reasoning was. I mean, uh... okay, well then what we need, if you want to do that, I don't have a problem. We have to, but we need to set something specific for, uh, you can't, I don't want to have a department head hanging on for you know, endless times. And I don't want the budget committee to be hanging, hanging on. So we yeah. need to, you know, try and try and schedule it. We'll, we'll schedule it at one of the evenings that only have two departments and we'll take the department head uh, matters first, let them go home because they're already home probably. And we'll, we'll you know, um, bring the budget. The budget committee will have to be, we'll have to hang around though because they'll have to be at the meeting, so. Okay. Well, go ahead, Dan, finish. Go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, Victor. Well, I was gonna say that this discussion has been kind of in hanging for la it was last year, probably it started probably the few year before. I think what would be very productive is how to frame it in such a way that it becomes a, very, a useful document for the analysis that happens concurrent with the budget uh -huh. and, 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 and after that. Not just an academic or is this good or bad or is it too low or too high because we've been there, right? Actually, uh, what is exactly the, the percentage now? I, I know it's 295 total, 4.3. So that, what, what's what's exactly the number you said, Augie? 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5.
No, but four point three million. I mean, uh, uh, Victor, four point three is what Augie said. Million. Yeah. So, so that percentage is ten percent. Around ten percent. It's around ten percent. Around ten percent. So, what is a practical, and how would this become a practical analysis, both for staff and 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 from the perspective of the board that Mr. Mr. Natchez has articulated based on the budget committee's recommendation. How could this be framed in a way that, okay, between it, it is justified to go from seven to 10 be, under this or that, or here, you know, explain that. And in this current cycle, this is what will, could happen based on where we are and have kind of a productive, you know, elements of the outcome, you know, product of, of all this. So that, that's my suggestion. I'm not, I'm yeah. not against uh, but i but i on the contrary i'm in favor but but i also think you know we've been actually this has been discussed probably in two two cup last couple of years not just in the last cycle i think so, what you're yeah. talking about victor is a, is a budget guidance document that has some some percentages just like we have a document or a resolution that um requires us to keep 30 percent uh, surplus in our uh, right. in our fund balance Something right. along those lines. Right. And if you go higher and you go, yeah. if you go higher, then you have to use surplus if you get yeah. or or you have to cut or something developed. That's what you're talking I'm about. I'm sure there's something about that. When when the this board developed that policy, we looked at many and then wrapped it up in what was more mm -hmm. what was more useful. But question where did that 30% uh, surplus figure come from? Uh, Is that uh, uh, standards I, 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 or Controller guidance, really guidance from the controller's office. Guidance from the controller's other municipality. Thirty percent. That sounds high. Wow. All right. All right. Um, so, so, what do we want to do now? Do we want we want to get into the the individual items, or or are we going to continue to talk about the percentages? I think uh, I think we need to wait before we have more information on the percentages. Yes. <laughs> Well, we have a motion, so I'm happy to defer. Oh, just a minute. I'm happy to defer the motion to uh, a, a meeting, but I don't want it at the end of the budget cycle. So it has to be within the next two two meetings. We only have five meetings. This is one. Right. So, so uh, um, you, you, if you're going to withdraw it and make it again, no, I'm not withdrawing it. I'm just we, I'm willing to have it adjourned. So you're going to let, let the uh, the motion is uh, sitting there on uh, on second. We're not voting on it now. Is that how that works? That's what I'm. That's what I'm suggesting. I'm happy to do that. One at the first budget meeting, which is the the April fifth budget meeting, or is it the fifth or the sixth? Fourth. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh yeah, we are. We're Monday. You want to put it on for Monday? We'll put it on for Monday. Okay, that's fine. Well, put it on for Monday. And what is it? What is the motion again? Do, do we have a, a somebody can read it back? I'm, I don't remember quite the way it was phrased. The motion was that the village should uh, maintain maintain a target debt service at seven point five percent of the operating budget. I e. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. the word is target. Target uh, requirement. All right. Great. Not, not, we'll we'll, uh, we'll look at that on uh, April fourth. Okay. Um, with with that, if if I may, I'll lose. With that, okay. uh, Jerry had come up with um, amending the budget committee's recommendations for prioritizing the capital expenses. And when I went through the uh, capital expenses, it doesn't quite follow that. Uh, some are, some aren't. I think we need to, you know, that would be helpful if that if staff could rearrange uh, the. No, I'm not suggesting re recalculating stuff, but I'm saying reorganize this in relation to the, you know, the five items that, um, you know, were in the priority list. I'm not sure what you're saying here. The, it, I mean. It's clear what, they, what their priorities are. They have them all. all no, uh, no, 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 no. I, I, it's clear what the department heads are doing. I, I have problems with that, and that's that's very that's very helpful. But there is a, uh, a there was a recommendation by the budget committee of how to prioritize things like um, health and safety, uh, 
you know, that which is required by court, you know, by court decree or um, consent decree or items, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It doesn't seem to jive necessarily with what we have in front of us. And I think in terms of helping us guide through the, this long list, that would be very helpful if this, if Jerry, you can re, um, uh, Jerry and Olga, if you can reorganize, not change any of the numbers there, yep. Just put category one, category two, category three. Well, I'll explain it. I'll explain it to Lou because he's new. Um, all right, all right. Look, 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 look. I have a thought though. One, one of, uh, one of all the trustees, including the mayor, go through the list and come up with our own priorities, and then we can compare them. No, no, no I'm in favor of that. But what we need to, Lou, I, I realize you haven't been part of it, but for two years we've been talking about how to mm -hmm. prioritize uh, our capital expenditures um, for budgeting purposes. Uh, it was, it's very important to get the department heads input. It's very important to get uh, the manager's office input, but it's also very important to try and take all of those and put them into a category of, you know, things that we legally have to comply with, things that are health and safety, uh, i.e. We, we created a model of how to, you know, of how to look at things. And that, that's something I think we should be doing. This is You're talking document. about stuff we got to do and stuff that's optional. So no, Lou, it's a, an evaluation criteria. The comptroller in their guidance on how to develop a yeah. um, better capital plan provides uh, a spreadsheet where anyone, but I was the only one who actually did it, was to create an evaluate or, or uh, use an evaluation criteria to rate each project or each initiative or each piece of equipment based on um, what I feel what I felt at the moment was the scoring. Uh, and so we created a criteria scale. So when you see it on that column on the capital budget, it says VM, what does project it say? Score. VM criteria, whatever, whatever it says. Project score. Project score. Project yeah, score. project score. So, so what I did, what I did during my process with the capital budget is created a project score. Uh -huh. um, we can provide the spreadsheet to any one of uh, staff and or but, uh, board members to create their own budget score. But I, what I think Dan is asking is that I re re-examine, re-look at those budget scores and um, make sure that first of all, the priority hasn't changed in the last time I did it, but also to present it to the board in such a way where the highest scores are the items that need to or are imperative that we focus on first and the lowest scores obviously are gonna be the ones that you know, we, can, we can keep deferring year after year after year. Well, that, that, that was that was my question when I first looked at this. At, at no, what number would this cut off uh, for, let's say, this year? I, I mean, that's what I presumed it meant, right? I mean, so so, so a, a project in the four hundred number that's that's yeah. a high priority project. Yeah, that I get. Project, right. Okay. A project with eighty, right, is is less. So, and I just want to. I'm thinking that's what Dan's saying, but I want him to respond so that I make sure that I'm. Yeah. I'm yeah, um, what I'd like is, if you will, if let's assume the 400 numbers is, is, is number one. Yeah, okay. All of those would be lumped together. Okay, then, all, the, all the big numbers lumped together. Then the number two, you know, would be lumped together. Number three oh. would be lumped together. Number four would lumped, I don't want you to change the scores or anything, or unless you feel you have to, but it's easier to look at. These are meant, you know, these are the most critical in terms of the overall, not in terms of how a department looks at something, in terms of anything else other than we have legal requirements to do. That, you know, it sounds like a cut and paste uh, uh, issue. Uh, we well, can just do yeah, it, right? That's all, well, that's yeah. all. Yeah. all, right. all right. I mean, it's a spreadsheet. So right now it's sorted by department. Jerry can sort it by VM project score, right? I mean, anyway, yeah, we can. And, and then it's, it's basically just that. running, a, just sorting the data differently and printing it out that way, right? It's not right, a lot we, we can read so, it by project score and, and we can follow what the budget committee um, had recommended, which was this, what's on the screen right now. Okay, so what I, what I would like, Jerry, as you do that, 
as you you know hit the magic keys on the Excel sheet to re, re you know read format it. Uh -huh. End of each of the categories to have a total. Okay. Uh, the you 400 know, numbers. Not a cumulative numbers. subtotal, okay. a subtotal, a subtotal for each of the categories <laughs> and a total at the bottom of everything. Okay. That makes sense. So create multiple, we create multiple sheets on one page or one on one document so that you can see what the highest priority items are and what their total would be as far as dollar amount. That's correct. That would be, right. that would be, that would be very helpful. We can do that. I don't have to have Mr. Sarnoff volunteer for that. I can do that myself. <laughs> and you don't have to change anything unless you think no. there's something that, unless yeah, you- Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, I will. Here, Jerry. it's the I same will. information, just grouped differently. I, they're, they're yeah, and I will. Fun. I will I do don't have to be. I don't have to volunteer, Jerry, but I feel I may be volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't. You won't have to. All right. Uh, does anybody have any specific questions on, on, on capital budget items? Um, I can I have one going with one unless you have something, Lou, that you would like to delve well, into. 67 mandatory river maintenance after ACE project. Is that capital expenditures or is that going to be future operating expenditures? Yeah, we have. A, I, I'm we have sorry, a you, you've, you've lost me. Where are you? I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up on the screen. Just give me a second. Yeah. So I can, um, keep moving. Are you item here. 67? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. yeah. 67. Okay. 67 is at the top of the screen, close to the top of the screen, right here. Mm -hmm. All right. So Augie has a, a an explanation we like to use regarding what's capital and what's not, and Augie will provide that to you. Okay. I mean, how is that capital? So any type of reoccurring expense that's done every year, that is a operating expense. One shots or new projects that are done only in that individual year, those are capital items. Any item over 20,000 that is a new item uh, to be done and it's not annual, that's part of the capital. Uh -huh. And the criteria, the threshold is 20,000. All right. So if you have every year, for example, you buy, uh... so the example I wanted to use, I'm not gonna use is police cars because it's no longer in the operating budget, but. River maintenance is an annual budget that you do every year, and it's sanitation you do every year, so you keep it in the operating budget to social services. Well, the, th the thing I don't I don't understand is well I I, I don't understand. I mean we're we're gonna I mean we're we're gonna start cleaning the river soon anyway before the the ACE project happens. Um, uh, so um, shouldn't we just you know figure that that's what we got to do? That's our job. No. What happens is, Lou, if you add 350000 to the budget, mm -hmm. right, taxes, you're, you're, you're going up one point, one point whatever percent mm -hmm. on, on, your, um, um, on your increase. Mm -hmm. The 350 in a capital, we could capitalize the 350. And then the following year, it would be a lower number. It could be a higher number. Uh -huh. I'm not exactly sure, but we could capitalize that number in order to help us with our budget. And, and if, we, if, we, if we do work on the river between now and then, it may not even be 350 when we get there, right? It may not be, but I have a feeling that there might be a number that the Army Corps decides they want us to capitalize or that they want us to spend every year based on their projection of what kind of maintenance they expect us to do after, their project, after the project is done. Yeah, Jerry, it, it, it's going to be a big number, and I, but I, I have to look at the some of the backup enough. on this because it may also include equipment we may need to purchase to help us in our maintenance efforts. Right. And I, it's not. I mean, it's not just cleaning out the river. It, you know, at some point, it's maintaining the walls that have been built. Now, you know, yeah. probably that won't happen. Oh, I get it. Well. Yeah. This could is be restructuring that, walls. You're right. Yeah. It could be a lot of that. It's a lot of that. That's uh -huh. the problem. I mean, that is a, a, a conundrum in Massachusetts right now. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I keep telling people it's going to be like getting a, a, a double knee replacement. Yeah. Right. Um, well, hopefully you only need to do that once. <laughs> and you don't need to do any main maintenance on your knees. But, okay. well, I, I, well, I got a horror story I can tell you about. Frank. <laughs> What's the All next right. item? If we could go to number 50, 58. 58, top of the list. 
gangway replacement? Yeah, that's 600,000 right. over two years. Can get a little, Jeff, can you give us a little uh, insight into that? Yeah, let's see here. So those are gangways uh, and that seawall by the boat ramp mm -hmm. that that repaired and replaced. And then if we try to make all the gangways in the West Basin ADA, that's going to be a, a pretty large project because there's probably going to have to be landings put in and the gangway actually done in two parts because I can't push the docks out any further from the seawall because I'm already infringing on the, on the channel itself. So to get you know the, the, the gangways to ADA, it may have to be uh, a, a two-part gangway with a landing. I have that. I can pull. I can pull that project sheet up. Um, let me just change. Uh, let me just change items here. Um, one second. Um, that project sheet is on 141 of the capital budget detail, and I'll find it in a second. And that's also going to have to kind of be done in conjunction when they redo the seawall, because the gangways are going to be mounted onto the seawall, you know, in the west basin. Here it is up here now. Um, pipe, pipe, pile replacement. This is the sheet. It's on the, uh, it'll be on the screen in a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is it. So, so that's, um, that's the one. In the picture, that's the one ADA gangway that we have in the by the boat ramp. You have two ADA gangways. One is the boat ramp, and one is the um, East Basin dock, D dock. The the East Basin ramp. Right. Docks. So to get the other docks that you know to conform to that ADA standard. So an ADA gangway uh, is you know is now in the range of, uh, let's be generous and, and assume that inflation will continue, uh, would be $40,000 each. Right, but with, all, with, all, with all the whistles and bows. bows. Right, but that's for an 80-foot gangway. That An 80-foot gangway would overhang the dock right now. Only if you go, if, if you, there are ways of doing it, you can put it on an angle. And uh, you know th th there are ways of doing it. We're doing it all all over the country. Right, but you're gonna. I don't have a whole lot of slips to be putting the gang. I can't get to both sides of the dock if the gangway is coming down on an angle. This is something that Joe Russo had started. You know, the yeah. before me, and they had you know platforms. You know, in the design. This way, we we would maximize the boat slips. But what I think we have to look at is that is that when um, before you before you became the harbor master, uh, Jeff, Joe put in gang dock and gangway replacement, and we're using that number uh, off of this project sheet. But since we're doing um, docks in house, re repairing replacing docks in house, um, we may need to look at that number and revise that number. Okay. And and we can easily do that um, in the next week or, or two, um, and not have too much trouble with that. You know, if you want, Jeff, I'm happy to sit down with yeah. you and, and conceptually show you ways of doing it. Uh, uh, you know, that might be uh, equally or more functional and less costly. Okay, great. Now, so we'll take a look at. Hold on, let me pull that that sheet back up again. What number was that? 58, 58. Dan, on the master spreadsheet, uh, mm -hmm. we got to look at we got to look at 58 and uh, make sure that it's just. Well, you know what, Jeff, you're going to have to look at docks and gangways in the event that that um, you're not you're not working on the docks anymore, or at least include the uh, raw materials for the docks that you're working on in this number. So it'll it should be titled docks and gangway replacement. Um, and then we'll refine these numbers right here, these 302, 3025 every year. All right. 
More questions? I, I have one. I have one. I'm actually also, we have a, uh, Glenn is here and his hand is up. I, um, okay. but I have a couple of questions. Um, Give us a number. It's really, oh, it's Scott Pax. I don't have the number. Uh, we'll find it. Yeah, well, that's that, at the end of the. Uh, so right here, it's the last item. I thought last year we had a conversation about not putting it in the capital budget because it's a it's a really an annual expense. Now I guess Augie's saying, and it's under twenty thousand, under twenty. So I'm just it's not it seems to be something that's an operating expense. You're you're referring to Scott Pack's the line one forty eight. Uh yeah yeah. Okay, so um, last year when you had a discussion about it, you were referring to the replacement of the bottles, the actual air canister. Um, this is the actual entire breathing apparatus. It's the what we wear on our backs with the mask and, and everything. So they last um, a lot longer. They last, they last a long time. I would say the oldest ones that we're currently using have to be probably around 25 to 30 years old. And... Um, okay. The reason the reason that we haven't replaced any in quite a few years is because the the manufacturer changed the design, mm -hmm. and it was actually hated throughout the country where it was being used. So we did not purchase any because they were redesigning what we currently have. So we've been waiting for the better design to come out, which they're projecting for the end of next year. Um, and at that point, pretty much everything we have will need to be replaced because the parts for what we currently have are not available. But that's not an annual thing. So no, just, this is going to okay. be this is going to be a, pretty much a one-time expenditure. Okay. One big lump sum. Yeah. 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 And and there is a, a, line a general fund for Scott uh, Scott bottles. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the, bo the bottle the bottles themselves are the items that have that uh, expiration date. Yeah. And, and have to be cycled through. So they the, need the, to be the packs will last. The Those packs numbers. themselves will, will last as long as they're cared for. Right. Which is which is what we have now, and they've they've you know proven the test of time. So. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for the clarification. You're but welcome. I need I need I have a question on this. So so, Chief Barney, there's 50 potentially that we're going to purchase end of next year at 15,000 each. I have, understand that, but that. That comes down to 10 per firehouse per company. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, on average, we have on average, we have between six and 10 on each piece of equipment. Okay. So that that actually 50 would actually not even completely outfit us, believe it or yeah. not. Yeah. So right. so we're gonna have to talk about that and, and make sure that we have the number. If we're gonna end up or or we're somewhat forced to purchase the new better model all at once, we're going to have to adjust that number so that the, uh, so it's, it's properly uh, reflected in the capital budget. No problem. Okay, good. Thanks. So, Obi, can we go back to your definition? Um, if we are, if we are continuing buying um, things that have a five year or less of a life every year. Um, why would we not put them in the operating expense as opposed to the capital expense? Because we're doing it every year. If you're doing it every year, it should be part of operating. So you're not doing, you're not doing Scott Pack harnesses. No, 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 I understand. That, but for instance, we do the police cars every year mm -hmm. we don't we don't do the entire fleet we do every every year we do police cars um etc you know there was a time when we took all of those things out of the capital and put them into the operating budget correct but it, they just for a little uh history on the police cars we, there was were in the uh, operating budget but with uh uh when covid hit we removed it from the operating, put it in capital because we knew we were getting 
the grant for, uh, through Otis's office that would allow us to purchase three police vehicles. And, and I have no problems with that, Dan. Yeah. And, you know, that and, you know, the paving where we get the chips money, I don't have, you know, if it's a wash item or a, you know, significant wash item, sure. I don't have a problem with that. I, yeah, I, I, I'm not making a value judgment, I'm just saying that, that, was a, that there was a decision and we just haven't, uh, uh, gone back to funding the police vehicles through the general fund budget. Yeah, but but I, but I think we need to take a hard look at. We have license agreements in here, and license agreements we do every year. So I, I think what, what I'd like to do is, to, I mean, they're not large items, but there are items, and I think we need to take a look at those and determine whether you know what if these are you know with something we're doing every year, you know, handle it. In the operating and then you know uh, and, and i i can understand that that thought process and and maybe so i can tell you of course this year we're getting four new cars because we had four cars destroyed um but um in future years i, I think police cars should go back into operating so we have a set number of police cars that we're replacing year after year after year it just yeah. happened to be that it just happened to be that we made that adjustment because of the grant but also to help us with our COVID, to help us with our COVID budget, it really helped us significantly to pull, you know, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars out of the budget to be able to um, um, offset the the revenue loss that we that we anticipated. But but now that revenues are coming back and we're increasing revenues, the cars could go back into operating, and we just, as a matter of um, an annual uh, purchase order, order three new ones every year. I don't think Chief DeRusso will mind that, but I can also defer to her and see what she says. I have no issue with that. Okay. Well, I think the Chief wants the cars. <laughs> I think so too. As long as she gets the cars. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But yeah, that, that's, that's fine. That could be something, doesn't have to be in this year's budget, like I said, because we're getting four cars replaced, but um, it could but be- we have in, in we, we, We're getting insurance for, uh, on those, are we not? We're getting insurance plus also whatever the insurance didn't cover we talked to fema i talked to fema this week about it and they're covering the balance of them so okay so we're in good shape know, yeah. so on the on the capital items which you've identified which are not on my blown up list um which is fine um you know to the extent that we have that they are being how do i say it like self-funding i.e you know, the CHIPS program, you know, the paving in, you know, we're getting the money back on that, you know. Sure. Sure. I think we should break those out so that even though they're in the capital, it's, they're basically wash items, i.e. we, there's a grant or some other information that is paying for it. So the way I would look at it is, I wouldn't have put that in the seven and a half percent type thing. Do okay. you follow where I'm going? I do. And, and because it, it pays for itself, i.e., you know, whether it, yeah. you may have a delay of a year, you may have a delay of, a, of two years, depending on how the things work, but it's basically a wash. It goes in, you know, we, it goes out one way and comes in on the other hand. Uh huh. I get it. That's fine. And that could be part of the discussion that we have Monday night as far as the, the yeah. target 7.5% policy. Yeah. No, but so it, it it, it, it makes it a lot easier. And I think it's much easier for people to understand that are not delving through the weeds. Here. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, conceptually they can take a look at it and say, okay, we understand that it, mm -hmm. it isn't as big a hit as we think it is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but Lou, did you have items? Do you have, there a, is a, a I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ahead. I thought Lou had some items that he wanted to talk about, but oh, I'm sorry. I didn't no, no, that, that, that was, we covered it. Okay, good. Okay. I, so, I, I, I have one question along the same vein, and it's, I guess it's for Augie. So number eight are the Microsoft 365 licenses. And it's, you know, it's $23,000. It's not a lot of money, but the project score is only 75. So it seems to be, we have to renew the licenses every year, right? They're, they're annual licenses. And it's got a low project score. So, you know, if we're really paying attention to the project score, we'd never get to something that was 75. So I just, that's, I mean, so what are, you know, how do we make sure that we don't 
that we don't put stuff, I mean, it's over 20, but it's something we spend every year. So how do we make sure if we're really gonna prioritize according to project score, you know, I think it's really important to pay for these licenses. Right, but the check valve that's in the system is nothing prevents us to go to the board and be a resolution and ask for the purchase of these items and explain why we need them. Oh, no, I, I understand that, but I'm just saying if we're really trying to get a handle on what uh, on what our capital budget is, yeah. we would yeah. put that way at the bottom and and it's yeah. something that we need to do. So that I'm and I'm sure there are other things like that. That's that's where I've got a little confusion with capital budget. Yeah, so 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 if I can explain the project score, you know, you're right, but but and the reason it's a 75, of course, you know that it doesn't it doesn't impact uh, uh, life safety. It doesn't impact uh, legal uh, consent decree, which which brings up the score higher. It doesn't impact um, some other items that uh, you know are um, like a DPW item has a has a a two to three hundred score because we utilize them in uh, um, uh, snow removal and safety you know safety of the public. So, but you're right. It does throw that off and. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's not necessarily a project score, although that's what we've decided to call it. It's, it's more of a, um, uh, I probably should use something like a, a public safety or a, a, an impact score um, that, yes, if we, have if we don't have the 365 licenses, we, the people on this Zoom, are significantly impacted, but I'm not sure if the public is impacted really in any way. So I think that project score may be getting more uh, value um, uh, in uh, than more value than, than uh, it is on these kinds of items or, or more consideration than on this kinds of items. Jerry, Jerry can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Um, uh, maybe maybe there, there should be an asterisk or something like that, but these are items that you simply have to pay. They're not optional. Uh, they're, they're not they're, they're essential um we, we used to call them uh in, in in broadcasting must runs and the things that had to had to go into the broadcast that's so fine. um that's okay you know, with me yeah that's yeah yeah so you, you 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 put a little thing next to it uh, that says we that's you know don't even think about messing with it you got to pay that mm -hmm. so let me ask you you know i understand that but all the licenses are going to annual basis uh, and if there, we have to pay it every year, it should be in the operating. And it's and I agree, it's a must. It must be done, and that's an operating thing. It must happen. It's not a capital thing. And I think we need to take a hard look at that. Yeah, so uh, we do it. We do an operating flush on the capital, on the capital list to see what should be in, in operating and what yeah. can stay in capital line in capital. Yeah, I, I know that we have numerous licenses, and we used to be able to do a five year, a two year, a ten year. <laughs> We, we're lucky now if we get 365 days. <laughs> and and yeah, one of the things we, we have in, in the budget is the department had priority, which is not necessarily tied to the project score. So it's, it's an attempt to provide both a qualitative and quantitative uh, assessment of each project. I understand that nobody's criticizing it. We're just taking a look at right. you know, where we want to categorize things. Yep. I do have one major thing that is not on any of these lists that we are uh -huh. a DEC order on, which is the dam. Dam is not on this list, I don't think. No, it's not. We, we may have discussed it, Dan and I, the other Dan and I may have discussed it in the past, but um, it's not on this list. You're right. Yeah, but, right. And, and we need to, and, and what I'd like to suggest is uh, that we allocate an, some money for a engineering review um, because the, it, it, the, it's going to be somewhere around a million and a half, maybe more, whether we take it down or we replace it. But there are significant factors, adverse factors, either way. <laughs> um, uh, the Corps did some work on it when they were doing the um, homework for the um, Army Corps plan. Um, I don't know if anybody else does, but uh, we really need some real hard advice. And I'm surprised that we the DEC has not come down hard on us because they gave us a deadline of two years ago. Yeah, they haven't even mentioned it. Actually, I can tell you that. Uh, I understand, but it, yeah. just because they haven't doesn't mean it's going to not going to come in by this in the. Uh, so do you 
do you want us to do you want us potentially look at an engineering study to provide the board of trustees with um, as many options as possible? Do you want to have well, options? I'm not sure the options. What I want is what are the consequent what are the adverse consequences of taking it down? Okay. It? Because those are the only two options you have. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, playing game. I don't think because of the damn safety issue, unless you rebuild it, they're not going to accept a patchwork. That's what we've been told. We were told long, long ago. Um, so we're we're late. We're really left with two options, and there are significant issues attached to either each option. <coughs> and and Sonoff, uh, do you ever recall anyone looking at that? Any of our engineering firms or anybody prior so engineers? Um, I, I think in we're getting into specifics. No. Um, okay. You know the. I think there have been engineering analyses of what type of protection the dam affords, uh, and I think it's found to be anywhere from a, a two to a five year uh, storm. Um, each, if you uh, if you decommission the dam. Um, it's not like, uh, for lack of a term, it's not like, you know, some cartoonish attempt where you go out there with a, you know, TNT and, and blow it up. You have to, you, you lower the dam to, uh, you know, uh, I think the level that it currently provides on a, on a normal day. And I think you're also supposed to, uh, if you do de decommission, you have to identify and implement capital projects to maintain those benefits. Uh -huh. uh, but I can certainly uh, talk to some of the uh, uh, engineers that we've dealt with specifically as, that, as it relates to dams uh, and uh, you know, ask them if they can uh, uh, kind of give us that type of proposal. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so hold on a second. So, so can we, Dan, Dan Natchez, uh, Trustee Natchez, can we have a discussion about what the scope would be so that we could push it out to some firms to try to get sure. some numbers back? Sure. Okay. But in, in the interim, if Dan could contact the core to get their analysis of the okay. dam okay. Uh, that they did, and then they excluded it from the Army Corps you know, project. Um, and there were reasons for doing that. Uh, you know, so that's document, that's a document that exists that we can get and help to, um, define the scope a little bit better is what I'm getting to. Okay, define the scope. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll look at the core, we'll look at the information from the core to help us find the scope. We'll add it to our work session and then have the discussion of the board at that work session developing uh, a scope so that the staff has some direction of what you guys want us to, to push out and get some okay. numbers on. And, and allow me to, I mean, are, are you saying we're, we're two years past the deadline for for removing the dam or? We're, we're, we're well past, the, we're more, well more than two years since we were notified that the dam was uh, structurally unsound. All right. All right. That's great news. May I, may I? Dan, when was the first time that we received notice that we had to do one or the other, fix or remove? Um, because I think I have an idea, but I want you to throw it out. Um, I, I can get you the answer tomorrow. I'd have to go through the file. But I think it, it was, uh, it's been several years. How many years do you think, more or less? More than five? Yes. Uh, I, I don't know if it's more than five. I know, you know the first time uh, they came to us, we had to do some analyses. <coughs> um, but I think you know, with the, the DEC, I think it's either you know four or five years that they said wow. you, you have to do you either have to uh, bring it up to like modern standards or you have to remove it. Uh, the last time I had um, our engineer uh, from a company called GHD look at it, I think it was uh, approximately 2.5 million to kind of bring it up to uh, modern standards. Uh, and two and a half million to remove it uh, or decommission it, but I, I can I can review the file tomorrow. It's just been a while since I've looked at it. What do you remember? What do you remember as far as uh, 
the timeline I, when you first got on? I remember when I first got on and, and, and that was like the second or third notice uh, by, really? by, by, by when I got on almost six years ago, yeah. it, was, right. it, was, it was the same hammer. Yeah. You have to do something. I think then we got it a couple times. Yeah, I think, I think the first the notice was- yeah. it, uh, Because it was always split on whether to do one or the other. Right. Yeah. I really think we, we need to do two things yeah, we, without getting to the weeds. And I'm not, I'm not against it. I think actually the suggestions from Mr. Natchez and you are perfect with Dan's history and both, is that we need to move this really into the capital project right. and, and, and do a bulk of one or two so that you don't delay that. All right. And then it has to fold into our project, of course, including the Army Corps. The Army Corps doesn't okay. pick on it. So, but, but it, could be, it could be a matter of weeks or days when you get another letter and yeah. that is a consent right. order. That actually raises the number one. Right. That would be number one. Actually, I think based on that criteria, it should be number one. But I okay. want you to make that decision. And it's going to come to us, and it's the over, overall piece of this, um, um, you know, flood uh, mitigation yeah. strategy. It, it's about time we, yeah, uh, other priorities and and the, and and well, I shouldn't say it that way, but the the the, the point is we never got to it, and it was at around the same time that we were talking about river cleaning and the like. This is actually part of that. This is where the whole thing starts. <coughs> So we, I okay. think it's about time and very timely that we pick this project up, both in the capital, it's great. In the capital plan, in the budget because yeah. we make budget items and throw and build it in, and, we will. and that it's part of a work session. So by now, I I fully second that this should be back on our on our okay. work agenda, uh, work session, uh, probably on an. Uh, with an urgency uh, attached to it because he'll have he'll come back to bite us very soon it's better to do it ahead of time but we'll amend we'll amend the capital budget to include uh, an item for the dam based on um, the information that Sarnoff, mr sarnoff will find for us as far as the numbers the two million dollar range um we'll look up where we are as far as what the last um what the last information is that we had on it and look, we're not shy on taking on you know big impossible jobs. So we'll we'll you know and projects. We'll, it's much more we'll than two million dollars. Yeah. it's much more than that. I think it was much higher. Big numbers, big big, big numbers. That's one of the reasons why we didn't entertain it. It okay. was really significantly higher. I don't want to throw a number. Okay. Dan, because that I wouldn't want to even argue with his memory. But okay. but I, my my figure in my head is is that it's much much more than that. Based on on the projects, and what what it really meant. So I ha I have I have a bigger number in my head. We'll we'll add it to the bottom of the new of the of the new item uh, um, work session items um, for the eleventh. You know when we get to it, we get to it. But um, we'll try to prepare ourselves for that discussion as best as best we can, and include whatever backup material we can find in our uh, in our files. And our I know Richie has a lot of files that we can. We need, do we need to vote on on putting that on uh, Jerry? No. It's up to you. We don't need to. Which as long as okay. you guys agree, right. then we'll we'll put it on. I, right. I just I just sent an article from 2015. Yeah, seven years right. ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll take we'll take that on. We'll take that uh, that on. Well, that's progress. any more individuals. All right. Uh, anything else? I, Good. I do, I do have a uh, a way out question for the chief. Um, and Jeff, um, uh, both you, Jeff, you're asking for a repowering of your boat, and Chief, you're asking for a new uh, police boat. Am I, am I reading the capital budget correctly? Over here, this is this is police boat four hundred and sixteen thousand. Is that right, Chief DeRuza? Yes. So <laughs> last year we were unsuccessful with um, getting awarded any grant funding for a new boat, which was going to be a 75%, 25% match from the village. We are applying for the grant this year. Um, we did get some positive feedback that we were quote unquote in the running. They just ran out of funding. Um, but with a lot of initiatives going on uh, in the Sound in New York and, and things like that, it's looking good for us. So I wanted to include it in the budget anyway. 
expecting that that's how much a new boat could cost. Um, but we're looking to only hopefully have to pay 25%. But if we don't get a new boat, we would at least need to power up the new motors, right, Jeff? Right, so if we didn't get the new boat, 321 would be due for the old 322 for engines. That's this 34? That's that 34. So that would be because they're just about past their service life. We'll get this summer out of them. But if we don't get the new boat, we'll, we will have to repower that boat. Okay. So I'm, are we at, if we don't get the new boat, we're getting two new engines or we're getting, or I'm, I'm confused a little bit, Jeff. Two, three, three, two, one is a twin engine boat. So we would replace both of those engines. Right. And how, how long would that be good for, Jeff? Uh, the service life on those engines is roughly 2,000 hours. So that usually lasts us three to four years. All right. We buy ourselves. But, but to clarify, on this 416, if we get the 75%, right? So we're, this 416 is not our 25% share. This 416 is the total that the boat would cost. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay. That's fine. And the engines are probably worth more than the boat. Yeah, well, the, the engines, if you get them under the state pricing, they're about fifteen to twenty, fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars a piece right now. Oh, okay. So that's where the thirty-four comes in. Do they always get replaced in pairs? I would assume that, right? They always get replaced in pairs. Yeah, they always get replaced in pairs. Yeah, they keep them as what they call sisters in the marine business. They're sister engines, so they stay okay. together. And if we do get a new boat. I believe Jeff, the motors are included as part of that quote, right? Of that. So, right. So then that thirty-four thousand for the repower of three, two, one would come out of the capital for right. like three years when the new boat will be due for its first repower. And what do we, what do we do with three, two, one? That's a patrol boat. That's the that's the primary patrol boat for the Marine. Mm -hmm. If we what get the new boat, boat, what do we do with the old one? It uh, gets auctioned off. Okay. Okay, any more? Yeah, I have another one if nobody else has. Mm -hmm. And I think Glenn, I think Glenn might be in the waiting room, but I, I have a different screen up, so I can't see. He has his hand yeah, up. He, yes. yeah, he has his hand up. Well, let, 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 let him go and then I'll go after him. I don't want to. All right. Mr. Timmett, how are you? Glenn, are you there? No, hold on again. I don't see him yet. No, he's not there. Kristen's there. And that's, I think, uh, Harbor Master Kristen. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, it is. I don't. I don't see Mr. Tippett there. Okay. You want me to put the screen back up? Yeah. He, he left, but left us his hand. He's back. No, he's back now. Okay, back. He's All right. Back. In the waiting room. Good evening, hey, everyone. How are you? Hi, Glenn. How are you? Hey, Glenn. Good. Uh, I just want to go over um, a bunch of uh, the capital items. Um, items that should be in the operating budget. If you start with the clerk treasurer, item number five, corporate monitors. Item number six, router hardware. Outer, item number seven, uh, network storage. Item number eight, micro, uh, Microsoft 365 license. In fact, that was paid in the operating budget last year. Uh, it ended up being paid through, I think, uh, communications in the operating budget. It was, it was moved out. Those five items, every one of them should be in the regular budget. Then if you go to page two, you have HVIC that is done every... Um, that Give me a number. Single year. Uh, that's number 86. <laughs> HVIC okay. service $40,000 is done every single year. <laughs> then you have under the police. Now, hold on. Hold on on the HVAC. Hold on on yeah. that. Yeah, that, Dan, that's not ahead. for service. That's to kind of be on a standard basis of replacing one to two units. Of our very at our various buildings throughout uh, each year, so we're on a. But that would be like that would be like replacing the police cars every year. We're spending forty thousand every year, whether it's the same unit or we're just getting a different unit. We just rotate and spend the same amount every single year. Potentially, right? Potentially, but it, it is an item that can be in the capital uh, in the capital on the capital plan because it is equipment, and that equipment would last us. <laughs> 
you know, a significant number of years. We're not replacing HVAC units, you know, every three, four years. We're, oh. we're replacing them 10, 15 years. So. Well, I, I just want to point it's out. The, the sure, that's fine. I understand okay. what you're saying. I just yeah. wanted to discuss it further. Go ahead. No problem. Then you have Motorola radios, item 121. Then you have Axon Taser, um, 122. Then you have what? LPRs, 123. That's all police equipment that's done every single year. And then you um, you have LED lighting conversion, but you know that could be like the um, that could be like the um, things. But then you have 20 sets of turnout gear every year for the fire department. Uh, that's 147. And then you have the bailout system, which is 146. And even last year, when discussing the budget in July, the mayor uh, mentioned that these are items that are just perennial items. The fire department, police department need these items every year, and they might be better off in the operating budget. And it was too late last year, and he said that we should review them this year. So those are the uh, the temporary items. My my overall look at the capital budget is that I think that we need to come up with a number of what we want to spend on 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 cap on, on the capital budget to actually start to move these projects forwards. Whether we need to spend five million dollars a year, six million dollars a year. Realistically, whatever we need, we have to start with, we need at least $6 million a year. We can't spend $2 million a year. We're never going to catch up. We, we spend almost a million and a half just trying to maintain our truck fleet. Then you throw in a fire engine, boom, you're done for the year. We real have to come up with a realistic number, whether it's five or $6 million, this is what we need to spend on our capital projects. We then do, then we have to figure out how do we want to generate the money? How much do we want to borrow? And how much do we need to generate in house? And then I think we should have a, um, a secondary list that if the budget comes in well and we, we are adding to our um, unfunded balance, that the, uh, the additional money in the unfunded balance can be used for the priority list of the additional projects if something else hasn't come in come in we talked about it very early in this in this meeting um it was when i think trustee tafor and i were talking or he was talking about yeah. i had mentioned something like a budget guidance document where yes. which can be changed every year but it has some percentages it has some uh, big numbers you know other than the the board of trustees you're not going to get any argument from staff about spending six million dollars a year on on capital items. Yeah. There's no way. So I, 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 I so think it's, it's, it's got to be a policy. That, it's got to be a policy yeah. that that's created by the board to, to for their comfort level, so that they move, so we can move forward with their um, with their wishes and and their uh, objectives in mind. So we'll, what, we'll talk. What, we'll talk what, about what, that. What, what, Thank you. Okay. Um, I have two things, if I, if nobody else has anything. Sure. Hunter Tear parking lot, we're replacing that? Jerry, is that what this is? Yeah, let me, let me pull it up. I can't remember which one it is. That, that's number 95. 95. 95's a repair in the first year and then a replacement in the second year. Mm-hmm buy us a year it buys us a year that's that's the way we looked at that and that's got a high priority because we have a letter from the county or the state i can't remember but i'll pull it up so so it's a it's a two million dollar potential um replacement structure um and we have we have estimates of around three hundred thousand, you know 270 for the repairs that are needed now the repairs are the repairs are the stairs or the deck or what? Um, it's it's the railings, it's the um, spalding from the uh, concrete, it's things of that nature. And they called it spalding. I don't know what you know. 
That, that's the underside falling down on cars. Right. Yeah. So that kind of stuff being addressed could buy us a little bit of time. But when I did this, when I did this, this, uh, this list, I just wanted to add the 2 million to demonstrate that that's what it would cost a million dollars per deck to get that thing replaced. And the, so the, the money we would spend repairing it really is going to be lost by the time we have to really rebuild it. It buys us some time. That's all. It's all it does. It's right. It just buys us time. Yeah. And I think what we moved, what we've done is I think this 269 may have been in two, two capital budgets ago, two years ago. And then we had the 2 million, three years down the road. And now because we haven't, you know, cause we're compressing everything or moving moving, you know, 2020 into 2021 into 2022, it's kind of compressed. The other question I had is on the pa annual paving. Uh, sure. We, we, uh, we're still waiting, I guess, for your the priority list that staff was going to create. Uh -huh. We're working on it. We're working on it. We, uh, we just received the, the timing of the sewer pipe replacement on the roads that we're going to be doing. And then I had to wait for the draft of the next three areas of the meter, um, of meter seven, nine, and 10 to see if there were any full cut replacements there. I'm looking at that now, it's 200 plus pages. So if I identify items in that project, the full cut repair uh, in the next sewer remediation phase, then I of course have to take those streets off that list because I can't, you know, I can't, I can't be that guy who paves a street and then gets it ripped up the next year to replace a pipe. So I'm just, it's a little, it's right. I'm right there at that, at that moment where I'll finally get all the information to develop that list. That's the holdup on that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Good. We're almost at our time. Yeah. That's a good meeting. Um, I I'm glad we did this first. Uh, I'm, yeah, this is what I did. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The Southbury Avenue pipe assessment replacement. This is the one by the Otter Creek Bridge. I mean, a guy in Creek Bridge. The siphon. I think it's the one. It's the one up further, closer towards uh, Post Road. Let me see. What number is it again? That, it, I'm trying to look for it. Uh, um, it's somewhere around 40 something, 44, 45. It's our engineer, right? This is Southbury siphon pipe. Chief Barney, this is, this is our, this is the that's one the, here. Yeah. That's, Guyon, the, that's right? this day. Yeah, that's the sewer siphon, um, down yeah. on, uh, on Guyon drive in Southbury. Yeah, that it's is the first, completely, first it, it's, it's completely, uh, seized the valves. So it's, it's in the open position. Um, and they, they're, they're, going to be that way until they get replaced and we we end up we end up getting called out to pump to pump out the the um the basin uh, the basin all the time there then the other one the other the other siphon that we have in it we have a, an actual emergency on um is the one on uh on Mamaronic avenue at the s you know in the worst possible spot ever that's where we have a problem. So we're still actively trying to negotiate with the county on how we can get that um, how we can get that done because they're giving us some trouble about traffic control and those kinds of things right now. Hey Jerry, mm -hmm. I see you've got um, on uh, 45 and 57 seem to be you know obviously related. Is that the same project? 45 and 57. Yeah. No. Oh. Uh, no, I think I think the uh, I think the chamber reconstruction is I think different than I'm not sure why Hernani had it separate, but I think he may have explained it that the chamber reconstruction would have been different than the actual uh, issue that Chief Barney just explained about the pipe. But I think I think what Trustee Young is uh, bringing up is would it be more economic to do both at one time? Potentially, yeah, I think you're right. It would be. Yes, it would be. If I, the, uh, if I remember correctly, the the chamber itself has cracks in it. So when the siphon does fail and it does back up, it was it was leaching. 
So I think it was split into two projects to, to assess which <laughs> was could be done faster and mitigate the other. But if the money's going to be spent, it's probably best to just do it as one large scale project. Is, is there one part of it that can be put off? I mean, is the is the uh, is the chamber reconstruction something we can live without for a while, or is that? Is, uh... Yeah. If you fix the leaking, if you fix the leaking in the chamber, then you don't have to worry about the leaching of the chamber. But at some point, you're going to have to replace the chamber. I mean, I can't tell you how old this equipment is, but I've looked at it and I've been there. Um, you know, it's got some, it's got some years on it. That's for sure. All right. I, I have one last question. Mm -hmm. Tompkins Avenue Bridge. Sure. Um, I know that we haven't even begun to really dig into it. Are there any Bridge New York grants? Well, so we have a, we, uh, Dan will give you a little update because we were talking about that this week about Tompkins and we talked about it with uh, FEMA as well, Nora. So go oh, ahead, great. Dan. Dan, you still around? Did we lose Dan? Is Dan still there? No, I'm sorry. Oh, here uh, he yeah, he's there. Yeah, so with the Bridge New York uh, program, it's not going to open up again till next year. Okay. And even uh, still, um, as a point of comparison, we received our Bridge New York grant for Hillside Avenue Bridge in 2017. Uh -huh. We got a shovel into the ground in 2021. Yeah. I think the town of Mamaroneck is going to be slightly faster in that it's only going to take them about three and a half years to get from their award to uh, Waverly Avenue. Uh, what we've done with Tompkins Avenue Bridge, we've spoken with FEMA about it. Uh, what FEMA has asked us to provide is a uh, dual scope of services as to what would be uh, uh, needed for either the, uh, the as-built uh, replacement or a, a new replacement that would uh, you know, really complement and enhance the benefits of an Army Corps project. Yep. Uh, so uh, I have asked our engineers from HVEA to prepare uh, a quote to prepare those scopes of services. Uh, they submitted that to us last week. I had Jerry sign that last week, and we are soon to begin that work to get those scopes of services for FEMA so they can help us, you know, hopefully get to a point where we're replacing it not in its current condition, but in a, a, a better condition. Mm -hmm. well, we have, it, we have yeah. it on the FEMA, um, on the FEMA list at, at a, an approximate $5 million replacement. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're aware of it. Um, they just want, because it's a big number and it's a big item, they want updates from, from us yeah. every couple of weeks when we talk to them. Yeah, okay. so we've been we, providing we don't want to do an as, you know, a, a, a like to like replacement because you know, we have an Army Corps project, we want to make sure that, and the Army Corps has told us that if we replace the bridge, it should be done yeah. to complement their project with their right. with it in mind. That's right. So to that end, we're going to have to record that bridge sooner or later, no matter what happens. I, I know, we, we spoke about this, you know, the, um, it's a little bit different for, of a process because it's, uh, uh, I think it's uh, EHP as opposed to uh, the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, Historic Preservation. But I can't imagine they'd ask us to do anything different no, than they what won't. we've already done. So <laughs> you know how to do that, Dan. Yes. All right. So that's what that's what that is um, on there um, from FEMA. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Good. Okay. If not, I'll uh, take a motion to close the meeting. Before you book do, I just want to thank staff for staying uh, so good to help on, on yeah, that. Very helpful. I agree with that. Thank you. I'll make the motion. And I, I also just want to thank staff because three years ago today, we did not have the beginnings of a five-year capital plan. Yep. So, you know. You did a great job. Very huge, worked hard. Huge undertaking. So thank you, everyone. That's nice. How lovely. All right. I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, everybody. Folks, Night. take care. Bye-bye. Right. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.